Twas two pisanons Tim Groves. The wetter is pest, the wrens are over it and come, and the vokes of the turf were is hurled in our land. Of the name of Treacle Tom, as was just out of pop following the theft of a leg of Kyo Donnelly and Packenham's finished pork, and his own blood and milk brother, Frisky Shorty. He was to be exquisitely punctilious about them, both Shorty and Frisky, a tipster come off the hulks, both of them awful poor. What was out on the bum around for an off-board game for a Jimmy or Goblin or a small thick on his chanced, while the sea forts was making the Colleen ball. To hear the parson in the motor clobber make use of his law language, Edzo, Edzo on, touching the case of Mr Adams, what was in all the Sundays about it, which he was rubbing noses with and having a gurgle off his own, along with the butty bloke in the specks. This treacle Tom to whom reference has been made, had been absent from his usual wild and woolly haunts in the land of counties Capilines for some time previous to that. He was, in fact, in the habit of frequenting common lodging houses where he slept in a nude state, ale fellow with meth, in strange men's cots. But, on race night, blotto after divers tots of hellfire, red biddy, bulldog, blue ruin and creeping jenny, Eglindine's choicest herbage, supplied by the duck and doggies, the galloping primrose, Bridget's brewsters, the cock, postboy's horn, the little old man's and all swell that aim swell, the cup and the stirrup, he sought his well-warmed lab of a bed in a housing room, abide with one another at block WW, why didn't he back it, pump court the liberties. And what with malt to puke on vault to puke, re-snored alco, alco, ho, alco, herently, to the burden of, I come my horse delayed, nom nom. The substance of the tale of the evangelical bussy buzzy and the resinner bean, the girls who would keep calling them for the collarette and skirt, the sunbonnet incarnation, in parts it seemed he was before the ayats of martyrs or otherwise the thirds of fossil years. He having been with Katia when Lavinius had her men's lease to see in a pump ship doodly show, whereat he was looking for fight niggers with wild horses, oft in the chilly night, the metagonistic, the epic thalamorous, during uneasy slumber in their hearings of a small and stony broke cash draper's executive, Peter Cloran, discharged. O'Mara, an ex private secretary of no fixed abode, locally known as Mildew Liza, who had passed several nights, funnish enough, in a doorway under the blankets of homelessness on the bunk of Iceland, pillowed upon the stone of destiny, colder than man's knee or woman's breast. And Hosty, no slouch of a name, an ill-starred beach busker, who, sans rooty and sans scrapey, suspicioning as how he was setting on a trude stole on the verge of self abyss, most starved with melancholia over everything in general. Night bear man, you served him with Natty Girl's nano had been towhead tossing on his shakedown, devising ways and manner of means of what he loved to, if he'd a license somehow or other in the nation, getting a hold of some chap's parabellum in the hope of taking a wing sociable and lighting upon a side-wheel dive somewhere off the dulky Dunleary and bleak rookie tramline, where he could throw through and go and blow the sibicidal napper off himself for two bits to Boldywell Baltitude in the peace and quietly buzz of a one sure shot bottle. He, after having been trying all he knew with the lady's help of Madame Grissel for upwards of 18 calendars to get out of Sir Patrick Dunn's through Sir Humphrey Jervis's and into the St. Kevin's bed in the Adelaide hospitals, from these incurable Wellers lays among those uncurable Wellers days through St. Iago by his cockle hat, good Lazar deliverers, without after having been able to jerry-wangle it any sides. Lisa O'Devis and Roach Mongan who had so much in common, epipsychedically, if the phrase be permitted, hostess at odour in super petrofractus, as an understood thing, slept their sleep of the swimborn in the one sweet, undulant mother of tumblebunks with hosty. Just how the shavers and the shaw, the yokels and the oats, oh well, the wasters and the wild. And the bustling tweeny dawn of all works, mead of anthems, here we pant, had not been many jiffies, furbishing pot lids, door brasses, scholars' apple cheeks, and link boys' metals, when, as Hopper minded like no fella he go make bacon first longer white man, the rejuvenated busker, for after a good night's raven rumble and his shinkums top mooring with his coaxes, he was not the same man, and his broad awake bedroom suite, our boys, as our Byron called them, were up and a shuffle from the hog's home they love-named the barrel, cross Evelyn's chilled hamlet. 
Three roots and restings on their dense superfies curiously corresponded with those linea and puncta where our tuppenny halfpenny metro many plums below the Oberfleck under rails and stations at this time are riding. To the thrummings of a crude fiddle, which cremoning and crenoning, levy, gravy, witty and wavy, appy, leppy and playable, caressed the ears of the subjects of King Saint Finnerty the Festive who, in brick homes of their own, and in their flavoury phraseberry beds, heeding hardly cry of honeyman, sowed lavender of fine boyn salmon alive, with their priggish mouths all open for the larger appreciation of this long-awaited messiah of roratorios, were only half past a sweep. And after a brisk pause at a pawnbroking establishment, for the prophetic purpose of redeeming the songster's truly admirable false teeth, and a prolonged visit to a house of call at Cooge's place, fizz the old sot's hole in the parish of St. Cecily, within the liberty of Kiel Moor, not a thousand or one national leagues, that was by Griffith's valuation, from the site of the statue of Premier at Lastone, setting a match to the march of a maker, last of the Stuart Petetra, where the tale rambles along, the trio of Whackful the Diddlers was joined by a further intentions applied to Mara, casual and a decent sort of the had been variety, who had just been touching the weekly insult, few it, and all fig blabbers, who saith of noun, had stimulants in the shape of G and G's, stood by the damn decent sort, after which stag luncheon and a few ones more just to celebrate yesterday, flushed with their first afforded friendship, the rascals came out of the licensed premises. Brown's first, the small PSXX executive, cap a hand in their sad rear like a lady's postscript, I want money, please send. Wiping their laugh-leaking lipes on their sleeves, how the Bukalin shout their Russian generally, Shin Fion, Shin Fion's are on. And the rhymer's world was, with reason, the richer for a would-be ballad, to the balladeer of which the world of humanity singing owes a tribute for having placed on the planet's mellow map his lay of the vilest bogayar, but most attractionable avatar the world has ever had to explain for. <laughs>